Hickok 45 and it's M4 time, as in Benelli M4. Ha <laughs> ha, man. Did that smoke? <laughs> oh, another pot. <laughs> oh, what else? Oh, man. Let's take out a bucket. <laughs> yeah, it was with some number four buckshot. The Benelli M4. It's a shotgun you're probably familiar with. Uh, that might be some military folks from Fort Campbell flying over right now on cue. Pretty cool. Uh, you know it is. It's a, uh, I think it's a, yeah, it's a military helicopter. You folks in the military might recognize the sound. Uh, I'm 99% sure it was, unless the light was not good, but yeah, it looked like one. So they knew we had an M4, <laughs> I guess. Pretty interesting. I uh, hope they weren't doing surveillance on us. But yes, this is an M4. It, it is, yes, uh, it's used by the military. It was adopted in, uh, I think, around uh, 1999, 1998, you know, and uh, they started cranking them out and uh, issuing them, I think, in 1999 to the Marines first. And then, then it became a Joint Services Combat Shotgun, and I guess it's all over the military services now. Uh, so that's been, been a while, 15, 16, 17 years that this thing has been in service. And from... Uh, what I've read, uh, it's well liked and it's been reliable. I'm sure there's some uh, situations where it's not been, as with any firearm, but it has uh, has served well, as I understand, and is serving as we speak today. We're empty, uh, but the old Benelli M. Uh, what else? I guess that's the end of the video. Now we're gonna have fun with this and uh, shoot at some. You know, I have had a Benelli since 1989, the M1. And uh, so I have a little experience with these things. So I'll talk about some of the differences between the military. Well, this is sort of the military. This is the civilian version. You notice it's a five shot, five plus one. But you can change this out, the magazine. So it will hold, I think, seven. Uh, I believe it makes it seven plus one. And you can change out the stock. If you don't want the pistol grip, There's you can change out all these things. It's just that I think it's difficult. Uh, correct me, some of you Benelli M4 experts, uh, but I think that Benelli still, as we uh, stand here today, is it's not offering this maybe to civilians with the uh, seven round mag in place already and that kind of thing. They don't offer as many options, I think, to civilians. It's only to law enforcement and the military, even though they're not illegal you know, at all in this country. And so it looks like as I search around, there's an aftermarket, a healthy aftermarket <laughs> of extensions and different kinds of replacements everything from 50 bucks to 200 titanium uh, magazine tubes and all sorts of things you know for this gun because it's been around a while now and it's uh it's fairly popular but it's expensive so it's not one you see often you know all your friends don't have them because it's it runs at uh not to speak disparagingly of your friends and mean that but it's just not common uh it runs almost two thousand bucks so it's right up in you know, 1900, 2018, I, I, you know, in that vicinity. So it's an expensive uh, piece of hardware, all right? Everybody knows Benelli's reputation. They're not cheap. They've never been cheap. I bought, the one I bought in 89 was a stretch for me. I remember I was competing and everything. I, and, you know, when you're involved in competition, we were even doing some shotgun competition. So I was, uh, you know, you just go ahead and somehow you find the money and you get the best guns and all that kind of thing. And uh, it was, gosh, I think I paid 700 back then in 89. That was a lot for a shotgun. Okay, so they've always been expensive. But they're good shotguns. It's hard to find anybody that is going to be really uh, overly negative about a, a Benelli shotgun. You may not like it for a few reasons. And they do operate a little bit differently than, than a lot of shotguns. But, uh, but you know, they tend to be reliable. Now that was with, and that's one thing we'll talk about, this thing is supposed to be with this gas system it has. It's an auto-regulating gas system. And uh, here comes our, our trash man, so we'll take a quick break and we'll get right back with you, okay? Okay, we're back. My trash man's a really nice guy. He's a good fellow, so we won't get mad at him for that. Uh, he just came a little late today. He's usually here early in the morning. As I was saying, uh, this has a gas system, I think that's what I was saying, but it's a, it's an auto, what they call it, auto-regulating gas uh, operation of some sort, and well, it's not of some sort, I'll show it to you, it's very specific, 
but it's uh, it's kind of a simple short stroke gas system and it's supposed to feed a wide range of ammo and they changed it uh, I was reading part and part and I can understand the reason being I'll load some uh, regular field loads in while I'm yak yakking at you but uh, this is my old uh, Super 90 M1 right here you've seen it in action uh, several times and uh, I've had it again since 1989 and it's been a good one but it's it got the inertia system you know there's no gas system at all and uh, and the inertia and the bolt the way it's rigged up uh, it's a classic it works it works well I've had a few malfunctions lately I think maybe the springs are getting weak after all these years I need to have that probably redone some of it but uh, maybe even the bolt springs and things I don't know but uh, it's been a good one and I was reading that someone who seemed to know what they're writing about how how with the inertia system if you hang things on them if you know like scopes or whatever you're more likely to get malfunctions and I can believe that because I remember back in 1990 I put a side saddle on this that holds the shells on the side you've seen those five or six shells and I was getting malfunctions and uh, and I know other people who were having the same experience and I don't think it was because we were squeezing the receiver we were careful about that and it just wasn't it lost some of the reliability uh, so I don't know if that was part of that or not, but you know the military wants to put you know night scopes and all kinds of things on on uh, their firearms and so I believe that was a lot of the reason the rationale for Benelli the, the, their entry into this competition back in 1988 98 I guess it was uh, Their submission they changed the system. This is their first gas operated uh, shotgun and, and It's even a little different than others. We'll take a few shots now you will uh, you will hear from people who have trouble with light field loads in, in these, and I think it's a matter of it's just not broken in yet. This one would not feed field loads. Okay, I'm back. We're back. The trash man brought back the three high points we had over there on the table. He realized uh, that they might not be trash, so he brought them back. We appreciated that. Anyway, that was a joke. <laughs> John had a coughing fit, to tell you the truth, and uh, we got another break, right? Should have gone and had a drink or something, drink of water, of course, uh, before resuming. But I think I was talking about the functioning of the my old, uh, well, mine, this was not mine, but of my Benelli with light ammo. I think that's where I was. It would not function with field loads, just birdshot and that kind of thing. It must have been a couple, three years or something before it would, uh, before it loosened up and would function with anything. It needed high brass for a while. And uh, so that was nice when it finally started functioning with that. Now this one, my first, uh, I don't know, I, I shot, I've shot it for a couple, three days. And it, uh, I mean, not a thousand rounds or anything, but I have fired. Uh, the military tested it for me. I don't need to test it to see if it works, if it's a, a good shotgun, right? And a lot of other people have, I'm sure. But I fired probably, I don't know, the, of the first, let's say, 25 shots or so, it, it did hang up some with uh, the field loads, okay? It would start, shoot three maybe, and it would hang up, shoot four or five more, maybe hang up. And I uh, said, so, well, I don't know if it's gonna work with those or not. Uh, but it, 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 which is okay, it's a defensive uh, military shotgun, so you know, they're not gonna be shooting field loads or wanting to shoot field loads in the thing. So it's not a big deal, uh, but it seems to be loosening up. And the, the last 10 or 15 field loads we have fired, I think we had one that didn't go into the battery. So, so we'll shoot some of that, it's kind of fun. So it looks like it's gonna feed about anything. And the gas system is designed for that, the uh, auto-regulating uh, gas operation or whatever it's called, Argo, it uh, is designed to feed about anything. And I think, I, I may repeat myself here now, I'm not used to all these, these uh, edits, edits and things, but it does have an interesting uh, gas system. It's uh, kind of the blowback plus the gas. It has a couple of pistons I'll show you. Let's shoot these and see if it'll, if I'm lying to you or not, see if it'll feed them. But it, uh, it's designed to feed a wide range of, of ammo, okay? And uh, it looks like it might do that. Of course, it will feed, it will cycle the hot stuff. And boy, we've got some of that. My shoulder will attest to that. And uh, so we'll try, did I put five in? Did you shoot five, did you load five, or did you load six? And uh, that's good enough. We'll try these. So uh, it is always nice when uh, any shotgun will handle you know, a variety of loads. And like I said, I think I said, uh, you know, this is the civilian version of the shotgun. And it's hard to get uh, from Benelli, 
you know, one and maybe impossible still with a full length mag mag tube uh, or a different stock even. Uh, I think they've got a folding stock or a collapsible stock. But generally speaking, I think as, as we talk here today, uh, that stuff has to be added on aftermarket. It's perfectly legal in this country, uh, but uh, you got to do that yourself. So uh, this is kind of the way I think all of them come if you just buy one that has not been modified. You know, there's a new new shotgun. All right, as with the Benelli, you know, whoa, it's not loaded. Yes, it is. You push this little button here, puts a round on the follower there. Now it'll load and it will shoot. Let's put a couple on the target. No, let's save that for buckshot. Be more interesting, wouldn't it? Someone put some uh, soft drinks down there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. It fired those three. See what it does with a two liter. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't lie. That's just plain old field loads, uh, federal, you know, seven and a half uh, shot that I, I shoot a lot of. Uh, well, you see what it is. And again, we appreciate federal helping us out. Just target loads. So that's kind of nice. You know, I brought some of that out. And I brought plenty of this other hot stuff just in case. Let's put some more. Uh, this is four buck, yeah, buckshot number four, and 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 shoot some of that, because uh, that's what it, you know it's designed for. Obviously, it's a, this is what you'd call a defensive shotgun. You got the pistol grip and all of that. Put them on safe. Let's put one in the chamber. There's just a little button here, choom, the choom, and then load it up. It's a kind of a tight. It, it loads okay, but it's, there's no sloppiness there. I tell you, you got to get that thing lined up <coughs> perfectly. It does all right. Not quite as smooth maybe as my uh, M1. There we go. All right, we got number four buck. Let's put some number four on that target. <laughs> and a wad, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I'm going to save that watermelon for something really hot. Let's put some of these on this other pot. This ought to smoke a pot. All right, wake up, little dove. There, we're going to we're going to shower you in smoke. <laughs> what did I tell you? Oh man, number four buckshot is nice. I've said it before. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. This thing kicks a little bit. Uh, before it gets too hot, I might show you how it's made. Uh, what else can I tell you about as I'm doing this? So, now, you know, so I don't have the pistol grip on mine. Mine came with this, basically the same grip. I've got it, you know, I've got it at the house. I just, I, I just don't like it as much. And if I were to buy an M4, uh, and I have thought about it over the years, just they're so expensive and I like this just fine. This is, I guess you consider an upgrade. It's heavier though, so that might not be an upgrade. If I had to go to battle, depends on how much I had to shoot it, but this thing is so light. It, it's just really nice. Uh, I, I, like I said, I might need to look at some of the springs. I've had a couple of uh, malfunctions that didn't make sense to me in recent years, uh, but it's not my, my home defense shotgun. I have other pumps for that, uh, but it's always been a great, a great gun. It's just so light and just uh, has been very reliable. Uh, but I switched out the pistol grip. I, I don't really care for a pistol grip on a shotgun. I can't help it I just don't like it and it took me a while to come to that decision that it was just in the way now When you pick it up and shoot it, okay feels good But every other moment that you're carrying it or doing anything with it It's just that thing is really in the way as far as I'm concerned But I would that would be the first thing I would do if I bought one I'd put like that stock I guess on it uh, or an aftermarket stock of some sort and then I would get an extension for it it's like, like like why not? You know, you've got this room It's kind of silly not to hold the full uh, length of, uh, of shells You know the, the capacity there should hold six or seven without any trouble there And of course you can get an extra round in you can put one in the chamber and then you hold your mouth right You can put one on the follower after you've got the chamber load the magazine loaded and all that and you can get an extra one in there if you want to like this is five plus one, six. Hey, 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 yeah, I might be from Kentucky, but I got that right, didn't I? Five plus one is six. But you could actually have seven rounds in it. You know, if you knew you were going into battle in the next uh, few minutes, you could do that. All right. Uh, so what was I going to Hey, I was going to maybe take, take it down for you so I can do it right here. Now, we're definitely clear. 
All right, because here I am going to be uh, putting my hand out here and trying to unscrew that. Now this is where I thought we might have to have an edit. I told John, but because uh, we were messing around with it, and I was having a hard time unscrewing it. I'm the one who tightened it. I didn't. There we go. Okay. Again, anytime you're messing around out out there, you know, with a tubular magazine or something, you know, you want to double check, make sure you're, you're clear. All right. And uh, let's see if I'm not too fumble fumbly here. So you pull that. Now, now these, the foreign just comes apart. That's two pieces. And you know, it's it's even labeled, you know, for, for people like me. It's got right, left, okay. And you see the that just slips off, of course. How that is, this is the gas system. That's all of it right there. You got your pistons there, and they are self-cleaning. And it's it's a Fairly simple design. You have basically four pieces there. I don't think there's even any springs or anything in there. And you've got a uh, port in the barrel. That's a hole for my relatives in Kentucky in the barrel that you know blows the gas in, into these chambers and forces this back and those hit on the bolt, the bottom part of the bolt. And so that's that's it. Um, and I read one reason this is supposed to be uh, better in terms of a gas system and highly reliable is that the port in the barrel is is just beyond the chamber where the gases are especially hot and cleaner at that point and so you know you you get as good a system as you can get you get less dirt and less grit and that sort of thing and then plus this it's self-cleaning so all that's good all right so you know um, what what can be more important to a military uh, law enforcement shotgun or of course a defensive shotgun for you or me what can be more important than reliability not much but it's that's way more important than accuracy and you know, look what i just did i thought that was awfully easy to get back on and all that sort of thing these uh these sides won't go on unless that's pulled out a little bit let's see okay yeah see i told you i couldn't read left not to put that on the wrong side or try to let's see which side does that one go on the right okay i guess is this the right side yeah there we go looks like that might be where it goes now we slide it further down there we go then we tighten it up and that's another thing you want uh, you know with a military fire and that's one of the attractions i think a lot of us have to military firearms we're not looking to go to war they're just interesting they're well made they're reliable and generally speaking, uh, they're designed so that they can be taken apart easily and cleaned and durable, reliable. Uh, you know, it's just, they just, they're interesting firearms, you know, if you're into firearms at all. And if you haven't noticed, John and I are, right? Okay, uh, I've talked about the price. It's expensive. Uh, the reason it's it comes the way it does, it's kind of a Benelli thing, I believe. It, you, some of you that have these, you've studied these a lot more than I have. I mean, I've had them a long time, but I've not really studied the M4 a lot, other than just look at it occasionally and think, hmm, do I want one of those ever? They're awfully expensive. Is that any better than my Super 90 M1? Uh, but you may have, have owned several of them. Uh, but in terms of, uh, you might even, if you want to have a recommendation, and we don't like people are trying to sell their products, you know, in the descriptions and all that, or in the uh, uh, comments. But, uh, but you know, if you share your experience with, with the firearm, you know, that sort of thing, what you put on yours, maybe people are interested in that. Uh, so it is, it is a pretty good gun. Let's shoot some more. Let's, let's go ahead and bruise my shoulder. This is, John and I have determined, this is about the hottest stuff we get from Federal. Uh, and I think they sent me some of this by mistake one time, so I have a fair amount of it. Uh, it's... I won't say by their mistake, it might have been my mistake. I ordered it incorrectly, but it is three inch magnum and it is, it is magnum, believe it. It is, and it's, uh, what is it, 15 pellets? Yeah. When you fire this stuff, you know you fired something. You put safety on, and uh, anything that we need to really blow up here, this is good for that. Just I've got a magnum slugger too, I think. Ah, as far as that goes. All right, a few couple of things. You'll probably be able to tell just from the recoil. It's hard to hide recoil, <laughs> you know? Uh, see, I didn't put one, yeah, I did. All right, let's just go ahead and uh, do our watermelon. This might go through it. 
<laughs> man what i tell you i you know this stuff is so powerful i'm going to put one on the cinder block wall john built down there man hey that's a nice spread isn't it at that distance uh it, it looks like almost all of it's on the blocks i'll save the rest of that for a slow let's go ahead and uh hit that uh tombstone Look at how it moved it. The guy moves me. I'll hit the cowboy. Wow. Uh, I think I, well, I'll put a slug on that skillet. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Boom. That has got some recoil. But, you know, you wouldn't care. And it's definitely empty. I'm going to go up here and reach up here. Yeah, make sure that's tight. Uh, let's try some slugs. Okay. It is slug time here. Yeah, look at that. I like to shoot slugs. Didn't have to tell you that, did I? But uh, yeah, it'll it'll knock you around a little bit. But I'm just wearing a t-shirt too. Uh, you know that that makes some difference. Most of the time, it seems like I'm, I'm sh well in the summer. Obviously, in the winter, I'm not just wearing a t-shirt. So I tend not to have on big, heavy, thick coats. And so I get the I get the max recoil whenever we're shooting something that kicks. Even when we're doing videos in winter, I don't like to wear a big heavy jacket. You've probably noticed then I'll tend to, even if it is kind of cold, I'll, I'll maybe have two or three layers of shirts or something and I'll not have a big heavy jacket. So I don't really ever get much of a padding uh, effect there. Uh, I just I just like to not have, you know, just heavy. Heavy clothing has always uh, bothered me, kind of awkward. All right, uh, slugs. Well, let's wake up the gong. Uh, that's a nice sound, isn't it? Yeah, we don't want the new gong to feel neglected. Try the red plate. Oh boy. Let's try a ram. Try another ram. Did it go high? Oh, that went right under his chin. Boy. It's, a, it's right on. It's got a ghost ring sight, as you can see there, kind of. It really is ghost ring. You can't see the top of it. Uh, I, I really, I'd like the top of it to be a little more visible than that one is. If this were mine, and maybe I'd put a little white on it, I don't know. Uh, in terms of elevation, uh, it's not ideal. Got your pristine rail there. You can put anything on there you want. Night scopes, and there's no telling what all the military puts on those at times. And... Uh, I believe that's a tritium uh, sight, I, even in the rear. I believe you got tritium there. Uh, so you can find your sights in the dark. And uh, it weighs about seven, I think seven and a half pounds, or is it eight? I mean, it's, it's a fairly hefty shotgun. It's one of the heavier uh, Benelli's. Um, but, you know, it, it, well, another reason they didn't use a, a, a more involved gas system with lots of linkages and side rails and different things was to keep the weight down because you saw that gas system is it's fairly simple i'm gonna shoot some more slugs is that all right you all mind uh you know i like them okay so the benelli m4 uh this is uh, a firearm that a lot of you are very familiar with uh because you you just follow you know what the military adopts and what they use and of course it's been in movies i guess it's probably in video games uh, you know, say, you know, so I say probably because I don't play video games, even though, you know, re, re, in a video not that long ago, I mentioned something, some joke about playing a video game like eight or ten hours a day. And it's amazing how many people thought I was serious, really. Oh. But that's okay. I love it. I love gullible people. I don't know what I'd do without them. All right, let's try the center blocks with slugs. Oh man. Oh, how'd those two liters get in there? <laughs> I bet John had something to do with that. Let's try a bowling pin. Oh, <laughs> it killed it. Oh man, look at that spin that thing. <laughs> yeah, you uh you need a little more capacity. That's that's the only the only criticism. Uh well it's maybe not the only criticism. For me, the, the negatives and positives, I would say. It's a little heavy. I've gotten spoiled by my, my uh, M1 Super 90. Uh, a little heavier. 
and of course the capacity that, that's you know, in these these days, in this country, it just seems kind of silly to have a shotgun where you're not using, you know, all the magazine uh, space that's available there. That seems kind of ridiculous to me. Uh, but, you know, there's reasons for that. That can be fixed. Uh, it's just that you pay so much for this thing. You hate to put two, three, four hundred dollars into it to get, you know, the way you want it. But it's a good gun right out of the box. I'm, I'm pleased. That it, I'm going to try that again. It feeds stuff like this light ammo let's put some more of those in m4 uh, this thing has been used uh you know all around the globe you know afghanistan iraq wherever uh our military is i guess in the last 15 years and then uh and other militaries and, and law enforcement uh, around the globe so it's not a big secret. It's just we're just now getting one. I just uh, we've never uh, brought one to the compound, so we need to do that. So I ordered one up. I wanted to shoot one myself. All right, we got buckshot. So why don't we think left to shoot though? Well, let's just shoot some steel. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Fun to shoot with that. And uh, that's good to know that you can shoot field loads like that. Uh, at least the, the federal. They're not the, probably the weakest field loads, but nope, that's not them. But, you know, they're nothing all that stout. I mean, sometimes they're stout enough I wonder about shooting them in like an antique shotgun, but they're just seven and a half uh, field loads. And it's uh, uh, one and an eighth ounce shot, you know, and, uh, you know, two and three quarters dram. So, you know, it's just a target load. That is great. Uh, you can enjoy your shotgun so much more and more inexpensively if you uh, you know ha have one that will fire that kind of stuff. Most pumps will cycle this stuff pretty well too. Did you notice that? Like I said, gullible, gullible. Okay, 15. What do we what do we got here? No, let's let's now uh, gotta shoot a couple more slugs. Is that okay? I'll shoot some magnum slugs. Yeah, here we go, magnums. Yeah, you won't see me in pain, I know, so let's do that. It's right. more safety on them. Yeah. Magnum slugs. I, I don't really consider that them necessary, you know, at all. A magnum slug. I like these lower recoil slugs, as I've said before. It's like, you know, if you ready to get hit by a pickup truck or a, a Volkswagen, there's not much difference. Okay. I don't know what I was doing on that last uh, Ram, other than missing it. Okay, I'm going to get him though. Yeah, I can tell a little bit of difference in recoil. Let's uh, wake up the gong with these. All right, let's get that other ram. Boom, bowls them over, doesn't it? Man. And with these rounds, they would kill a buffalo, I'm sure. So I'm going to try that one on the right. <laughs> Look at that, knock him around. <laughs> Let's hit him again. Hit him again. Harder, harder. Oh, I missed. Well, that's your benefit, Mr. Buffalo. Wow. We might have to do a slug fest with this thing one day if we keep it long enough, you know. Uh, you know, I love a slug fest, and I think some of you do, because slugs are fun. Let me shoot just, uh, what, let's finish up with something just kind of light and fun. I know, you know, these are famous for being able to shoot fast. At least the Super 90 was, the M1. That's one reason that I bought it. And uh, I had seen some videos, yeah, believe it or not, even back in the, in the day, <laughs> of people shooting those and uh in speed drills and things and uh if you really wanted to be fast you had to have a benelli there was a time in the late 80s that that was kind of the the thinking uh, okay let's just see if we can really pepper something here oh i don't know like that drum how's this of course they don't kick much uh and again they function that's great that's great what else you want to know about it uh we'll uh we'll maybe bring it out again and do uh like i say maybe a, a slugfest i don't know uh so you know 
in wide use in the military, I think the Joint Services Combat Shotgun, you know, it, it is that, that, that shotgun, or at least one of them, one of the choices. And uh, it, uh, you know, an innovative, I think this is the first one with a gas system in it. If I said, said that, I might have repeated myself, I'm sorry, or I might have even forgotten to, to say something with a couple of interruptions here. I'm used to stream of consciousness, uninterrupted, you know, usually. But uh, it's, it, uh, it was their first, you know, again, gas operated system, okay? And uh, it self cleaning and, and it seems to work. Reliability is supposedly the strong characteristic of this shotgun. And the Benelli's are famous for that anyway. And so I think they were trying to build as much into this as they could. And as I understand, I read it, it fired 25,000 rounds without any kind of major breakage or anything, you know, in a testing. That's almost as much as I fire, you know, in a month. And uh, so it went through rigorous testing. It, it, it won that, apparently. I guess it was a political thing. And it has been in use by our military, you know, quite a few different law enforcement departments. I think the LA, I read that the LA uh, Police Department used it. Uh, so, and there, there it's a huge department. So, you know, whatever they use, uh, uh, you know, carries some weight, okay. So, the Benelli M4 uh, is, is quite a shotgun. Many of you have them or have fired them more than I have. So feel free to add what your two cents worth. Maybe uh, it's a very expensive, it's a big investment if anybody's thinking about it. So yeah, I'll share your reliability stories you know, with us if you've had one for the last 10 years and what you've shot in it and what works, what doesn't, or if you've had problem. And of course, everybody, somebody's had problems with everything. But uh, just in terms of uh, your experience with it, it might be useful to people. Because I've not had one of these until this week. And so far for us, and John and I have shot a fair amount, we, we've enjoyed it. And uh, it, it's gotten better with age, <laughs> with a couple of days in terms of being able to handle and cycle reliably the, the field loads. So that, that's a good thing. And uh, that's, that's been our experience with it so far. And uh, we'll shoot some more. Uh, yeah, what can you say, a Benelli, they do good work. They'll probably be a successful company. Life is good. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm sure if you didn't, we'll be hearing from you. But while you're here, I wanna make sure you guys are aware of SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can get certified in gunsmithing with hands-on experience and also an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they are very accepting of GI Bill too. They work a lot with veterans. So go over to uh, sdi.edu and check them out. See if that's something that you're interested in. And also, while you're going out on the interwebs and looking at things like that, don't forget the Hickok 45 Facebook. If you're a Facebook kind of guy, um, check that out, Hickok 45 Facebook. Also, uh, the real Hickok 45 on Instagram and Hickok 45 on Twitter. Don't forget to check that out. And also, we have a website now, Hickok45.com. Try to keep it simple for you guys, and especially those of you in Kentucky, www.Hickok45.com. You can go over there and find out about all kinds of different things that we're doing. Uh, we've got links to uh, the people that, that support our channel. We've got uh, links to our store. We have uh, merchandise, t-shirts and hats and different things over there if you want to check that out. So go to Hickok45.com. Most of everything is over there. Also, if you want to see some other content that you can't find on this specific channel, you can go to the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel where that's you know, mostly me doing stuff over there and dad makes uh, an occasional uh, appearance over there. And also I have a Facebook, John Hickok on Facebook. You can also find the link to that in the description of the Hickok 45 and Son videos. And speaking of that, don't forget to check out the description of the Hickok 45 videos for any information about meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. Also, don't forget to check us out on Full 30. And if you've done all of that, all of those things, if you've completed all of that, then the only thing left to do is to watch a bunch more Hickok 45 videos. So I'll leave you to it and I'm going to finish painting these targets.